again. His book is entitled Losing Freedom, Socialism and the Growing Threat to America's Life, Liberty, and Free Enterprise. Thanks for the plug on the book, by the way. Well, <laughs> you know, but under the guise of COVID, we are losing our freedoms every day. Lyndon, is it too late for us to return to the America that you and I grew up in? Uh, the America that uh, had had and still has the free enterprise system that made you and many other people successful. Is it too late? The hour is late, without question, but we simply must. And it's not a return to the way life was, because the world can, is making progress, can make, has made enormous progress in terms of alleviating poverty and sickness. And that will continue because of the unlimited potential for growth that energy uh, enables. Even the reasons for warfare, when, when people don't have the essential resources to preserve their economies, they fight. The Japanese bombed Pearl Harbor because they were— or had been cut off from their oil supplies. Why did that happen? Because they were beating up on the Chinese. Well, uh, when people don't have the essentials for life, they fight. And that's, it, there's greater potential now for eliminating that where, where there's plenty of energy for everybody in the world, which means in improving quality of life, standards of living. And so that's where we must go. But you don't get there with socialism. That's been proven time and time again in the Soviet Union and Mao Zedong's time, uh, Cuba, Venezuela, uh, North Korea. You can't show me a place that uh, where it has worked. Uh, that's right. right? And, but and we can so, show you a place where free enterprise has worked. It's where we ha are living today. It's and easy. to think that, uh, that look, uh, of course, every, every, everything has its pluses and minuses. We have our things that, uh, in our society that can certainly be improved. But to throw out, to hear people on TV saying we have to burn it down to rebuild it again is just absolute nonsense. It is, and it, it shows an incredible lack of understanding history, where they, they simply don't understand how our freedoms came truly primarily initially from Judeo-Christianity. And I, and I mention Judaism because they were the ancient Hebrews, the ones who got this started 5,000 years ago where they recognize the value of the individual right. and the and no idea that them. individuals could be free. They didn't have to mm -hmm. suffer under tyrants. And, and that was the fertile ground, uh, the combination of uh, Judaism and Christianity, which has enabled uh, the ideas that were so important to our founding fathers. Right, that brought prosperity to this country and to many people around the world, to many people around the world. Well, you've seen many different administrations, many different presidents in your lifetime and lived through them. We, we've lived through them, you more than, my, more than I, and you remember them. Which one, which administration do you think did the did the least to help America, and which one did the best? That's a, <laughs> that takes a lot of thought, but uh, to me, the one, one who did the least was President Johnson, Lyndon Johnson. Mm -hmm. Why? Because in his effort to have a, quote, great society, he uh, established a an entitlement mentality mm -hmm. where, mm -hmm. where people could be given these good things mm -hmm. instead of having to work, work for, for them. them. Mm -hmm. An entitlement society. One of the problems is 
when you have an entitlement society, if you don't, for whatever reason, get what you think you're entitled to, you become the victim. Yeah. And so many young people today think, well, we're not t utopia yet. Yeah. yeah. I'm entitled to utopia. <laughs> right. And right. Right. Uh, I'm not getting it, therefore I'm a victim. And, and so it must be a rotten system. Rather than being the greatest system the world has ever seen, ever seen. and the uh, and and so that's the negative present. By far, the the on the positive side, President Reagan, and why President Reagan? Well, because he executed so effectively the ideas of free enterprise. And individual freedom, individual liberty, not only for, for this country, but encourage it uh -huh. worldwide. And in the early days, remember, Reagan was also maligned. The Europeans said, well, this guy's a He's movie star. Yeah, movie star. He didn't, uh, totally wrong. When you read the original drafts of Reagan's speeches, handwritten by him, mm -hmm. he was a thinker. Mm -hmm. And but these were not mm -hmm. original ideas to him. He understood the ideas of the founders, the Jeffersons, the Madisons, the, the Washingtons, and the Franklins, and and uh, he he knew the profound thought that went into this the structure. Sometimes I equate it to an operating system. Kids understand operating systems and computers. If you have a bad operating system, you, you don't have a, a, a good result with your computer. The Constitution is the operating system for this country mm -hmm. and must remain so. And as Franklin said, remember, when they asked him what kind of government the Constitution was, mm -hmm. he said, you have a constitutional republic. Mm -hmm. Not a democracy. Mm -hmm. I remember. If, if you, you can, can keep, keep it. it. If you can keep it. And uh, when you, what's the difference with a, quote, democracy? Well, a, a pure democracy. You're ruled by the mob. You have a, exactly. Ruled that. by the mob. That's and it. the mob, don't forget the, some of the travesties there, including the, the great advanced Athenian democracy through their mob wisdom. Mm -hmm. Uh, voted to have Socrates put to death. Mm -hmm. Well, That's you don't want that kind of system. No. <laughs> you, right. you want the kind of system yeah, with checks and balances mm -hmm. that were so elegantly balanced. Well thought out. Unbelievable. Uh, yeah. 200 years and yeah. hopefully 300. And, and the idea of federalism where you, you split authority between states mm -hmm. And, and a federal entity of some kind, brilliant. And these things must be preserved. Yeah, but it, it seems to me that that is, uh, that is not happening. It's not being preserved. Uh, the, the federal government <laughs> is making regulations that now uh, apply across the board to every state, uh, telling employers in every state that they have to uh, uh, make sure that uh, that every one of their employees has had a COVID uh, vaccine. Um, that that does. I don't know that, where in the where the federal government gets that power to exert it over the states. That's a state issue. Well, that that is true, and I think that ultimately the the Supreme Court will roll some of that back. Meanwhile, you have very smart people like. DeSantis in Florida, pushing back. Mm -hmm. Right. And the same thing is going on in Texas, uh, where they're where they're saying, "Hey, wait a minute, Constitution leaves that to us." That's right. Uh, yeah, but the problem with approaching it from in the courts, it takes too long. The, the 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 more effective approach is for people not to comply. And I see that the owner of In-N-Out Burgers, which is a chain mainly in California, maybe in other places too, a lady who, who, who is the CEO of that company, and I think it's a private company, refused 
to abide by the mandate given by the governor that every restaurant check the COVID status, the COVID vaccine status of every diner entering in. She refused. Yeah. And what do they do? They closed her restaurant so she can serve outside because they're not coming in. So that's a temporary thing. But if everyone refuses, that's what it comes down to. It comes down to, Lyndon, people having the balls to say, I'm not complying. I'm not shutting my store. I'm not shutting my church. I'm going to live my life according to laws, but not a- according to any uh, 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 executive order. I, I was shopping in a uh, Ace Hardware. This is, uh, you know, six months ago. COVID's raging or whatever. And I didn't wear, I don't wear a mask. Okay. I, that's, if people want to wear a mask, it's up to them. But, uh, you're supposed to wear a mask. So I'm in Ace Hard where I didn't wear a mask. And I'm waiting in line, and there's a customer in front of me uh, at the register, and he happens to turn around, and he does have a mask. And he pointed to me, and he said, you're going to put a mask on. I said, why is that? He said, <laughs> he said, it's an order. I said, I'm not in the fucking military. I don't follow orders. Right. More people have to say, I'm not in the military. I don't follow orders. I don't follow executive orders. I follow laws because there's a process of of analyzing when when laws are are, are first written down. They analyze. They go to committees to study and decide, hopefully by smart people, uh, at least there's a process before a law is enacted that it has to go through a process. An executive order doesn't go through anything. It goes through the mouth of a governor or the mouth of a mayor, and that's bullshit, and we just should just not comply. And if we don't comply, nobody's going to go to jail. Nobody's going to – they're not going to put every every burger place out of business. They're not going to do that. Well, if they did do that, that would be the quintessent totalitarian system. Right. And I don't think – That's not going to happen. We have that. But there's been tremendous overreach. On the part of many governments, I'm only encouraged, but some of them are pushing back. Right, right. I appreciate that, and, and I, what Ron DeSantis and other governors are doing to push back and to make it illegal in their in their state to enforce that kind of mandate. Yeah. yeah. So it it forces the people in Washington to recognize uh, that they, there are limitations to what they can. Stuffed down the throats of the people. Well, it but it uh, it depends how many people resist. That's what it depends on. Well, that, that's right. But you're you're talking a little bit about civil disobedience here, and and that can be very dangerous. Well, I think it's time for in that. its own right. You know, how do you think the American Revolution started? Do you think it started <laughs> by people complying, or by people resisting and exhibiting civil disobedience, and We hold these founders up as a paradigm for how how smart, brilliant, and brave they were. Well, we should follow in their example. I'm all for civil disobedience. And that's why young people need to know their history. Know that how— Well, that's why history is being destroyed. So you won't know your history. Yeah. That's one of the reasons I wrote the book. I wanted to fill in the gaps of civics, history, and economics that young people don't really get or understand. Because if they did, they wouldn't be swallowing this idea right. that maybe socialism is something is they ought good, to try. Yeah, that's a pretty good thing. We ought to try it. We ought to yeah. try it. 